Hello and welcome to the TorontoWestsideDeveloper.com. I am Peter Yorsi, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at cloning, exporting, and importing views, which will be the ninth video tutorial in this 10 part video tutorial series. And hopefully we'll be beginning to wrap things up. So this video tutorial will be pretty short and hopefully these concepts will, concepts will be pretty straightforward. But with that said, let's go ahead and we'll head over to our views listing page, which is that admin structure views. And here, this should be familiar to you from early on in the video tutorial series, and it's a listing of all of the views that we have uh, specifically with our view. So, I guess what we should take a look at first is um, this operations column. So you'll see here, if we go to our, our edit, we've got edit, disable, clone, export, um, and all of these are provided for each view that we have. Um, you'll notice that I can't actually delete a view here because Notice here it says encode. This is provided by a module, so that's why it says encode. And you notice my dog image that we previously created now says encode, but that's because I went ahead and I was preparing for this video tutorial, and so Views thinks that I have this in the module already. But that said, let's scroll down and we'll take a look at TWD dog review. Now, if we wanted to clone this review, we can go ahead and click on the menu link and click on clone. And when we do that, we get presented with this option to create a new view name. And you'll see that it defaults to clone of and whatever our view name originally is. So let's go ahead and change this. We'll go TWD dog reviews by users. Right, so this can be anything that we want. Um, and essentially it should just reflect what you're planning to do with the clone view. So we'll go ahead and continue. And now that we have this clone view, you shouldn't think of it in terms of the original view. This is its own separate entity in views. Um, and don't get confused by entity if you're familiar with Drupal and entities. Uh, I didn't mean it like that. But uh, that said, now that we have this view, we can manipulate this view and do whatever we want with it. and will not affect the original view. The reason why you might do this and the reason why I'm showing you this is because if your view starts getting a little bit crazy, uh, like our previous view where we had like six tabs from early on in the video tutorial series and it started getting a little bit wild. We were looking at listing nodes, but then we were also looking at listing images for a specific user and creating user links. Maybe we'd want to separate those out so that we have all of our node content over here and then our user listings over in another view. We can do that by cloning the view deleting all the node stuff for our new user view, and then keeping all of the node stuff and deleting the user stuff in the original view. Um, and that's an easy way that would take us a quick couple minutes and then we'd be able to separate and keep things um, separated and clean. So anyone that's coming to work on this site after us would be able to know exactly what a specific view does. Uh, and that, that's the, the, I mean, the primary use that I've ever found for, for cloning views. Now, on to the next concept, which is actually exporting our views. Uh, and there are a couple of reasons why you might want to export a view, and I'll walk through each one of those for you. But just like we had on our, uh, you know, to clone, we click on this menu link, and you'll see we've got this option to export now. So once we click on that, you'll see we get the actual code for the view, right? And as I mentioned, there are a number of reasons why you might want to have this. Uh, the first one being, Sometimes if your view is not working properly and you cannot figure out why and you post a comment or sorry, an issue on drupal.org for the views module and you say, you know what, views is broken. I know it's broken because I've extensively tested it and here's the issue. Uh, sometimes you'll be asked for your actual view code. Uh, so if you export it, easy way to get the code, provide it over, paste it, and there you go. Sometimes they'll also, and this is a sidebar, ask you for the SQL. Uh, the actual SQL query. And you provide that by looking at your view. You've got to make sure in the settings for views that you have the SQL query turned on. And we did that earlier on in this video tutorial series. If you're not familiar with it, again, quick detour, up here in settings, you're going to scroll down, show the SQL query. Uh, then when you're actually in your preview for your view, so if I went to edit, I could hit preview and it would have my SQL query down at the bottom. Copy that, paste that into the issue. Sometimes people ask for that as well. Uh, so again, sidebar unrelated to exporting, but all but related to looking for help. The other reason you might want to do this is if you're migrating. Uh, you could be migrating from Drupal 6 to 7, 7 to 8. Um, sometimes you'll need to export views and import them to make sure that they work properly. So, so that uh, has happened for me. But more commonly, if you're going from a staging server to uh, you know um, a live server, and you've made a couple changes. Taking the database from one to the other isn't always clean, and so if you know you've only changed views, you can export those views and import those views uh, from your dev to your live, uh, and it makes it a little bit easier. So, you know, have a handful of views, just do a handful of imports, 
couple minutes and you're good to go. The neat thing about doing that is when you do import, it'll ask you if you want to override so you can go ahead uh, and do that. Um, last use case scenario that I've seen uh, is when you're exporting, you take that code and you put it into your module. And I'll actually be walking you through this. So what ends up happening is you call a hook. That hook provides a default view, which is um, called the default. Uh, it'll call the default hook. It'll load in your view as a default view, and then it'll be listed here on your views listing. So that's why you're seeing in code here because my module is currently set up to do that. And I'm going to walk you through how I actually did that. So why don't we take a look at importing before we actually go and look at creating the code for your module, uh, just to give you an idea because it's so straightforward uh, and real simple to do. So we'll go ahead and, oops, didn't want to click clone. What I want to do is I want to export. So let's pretend I'm going from uh, my development server to my live server. I take all of this views code as my export. And once I have it, I copy it. I come back. Now I'm onto my live site. I'm going to go ahead and click import. I'm going to paste the code here. And then it's going to ask me for a view name. What this means is only if you want to change the view name that you're already using. So I don't want to do that because I'm going from staging to live. So I'm going to keep that. And you'll see that my original name from staging is uh, TWD underscore dog reviews. You'll see that I've got the option to replace an existing view. So if I'm updating a live server, I want to do that because I know that this now works better. So I can replace that. And you can bypass view validation. I wouldn't recommend you do this. You can do this if you know that something might be wrong with your handlers, but you still want your code in there, and then you're going to update your handlers. Uh, not necessarily a good idea unless you know what you're doing. So go ahead and click Import. And now I've got my view actually imported onto my live site. I would go ahead and click Save because all changes are only stored temporarily. And there we go. Now I can go back to my views listing page, and I've still got TWD dog review listed. Right. So let's take a look at the other use case, use, uh, case scenario where I'm going to actually take a view and I'm going to put it into a module so that anytime anybody uh, enables that module, they're going to get the default view. And you'll notice here that we've actually lost the other view that I had for my dog reviews uh, because once view uh, views updated, uh, cleared its caches, it noticed that I no longer had the file that was providing it, so it's gone. So that's why that's there. So let's take a look at this. In order to do this, we have to go back to our custom module. And what we need to do is provide a new file. Um, and in order to get the information for that, we're going to head over to drupal.org slash API uh, slash Drupal 7. And of course, my page is not found. And just like before, we'll do a quick search for views. Hopefully, you know what this path is already. But in case you don't, I'm just showing you the long way. So we go into views, and now we're going to look at views hooks. So views hooks, one of the views hooks that is provided is hooks views default views. And if we click, you can read the description here. It actually says that, you know, for your modules provide their own views, uh, you know, that can be used as as is or starters. You want to call this hook. So let's click into it. We'll get some information here right at the top. It tells us actually how to implement this. So what we need to do is create a file, which is our module name dot views underscore default dot inc. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll copy this. We'll go into our includes folder of our module. So this is our custom module that we've been working on in this video tutorial series. We're in our includes folder, which is defined by our module. Uh, we used hook views API and we defined this specific folder. So we're going to put our views file in here. So I'm just going to go to a text document, paste this. Yes, I want to change the extension. And now I've got to change this module name to be actual TWD views, the name of my module, right? So now we've got this file. I'm going to open it up in my text editor. And what I'm going to do, uh, first thing, is create my PHP tags. Always got to have those. And don't close them because we don't close them in Drupal for a variety of reasons. And now what we have to do is we have to call this hook, hook views default views. And it takes no arguments, so, uh, so that's good, or parameters rather. And, and we should add our, you'll notice that this is not my default uh, development, but we have to add implementation of hook, EWD, hook, whatever it is. We'll get it here. Right, and so this is just so that we document our code. This is the best practice, especially if we're contributing this back. 
So implementation, obviously we'll capitalize that. And it's no longer hook. This is actually our module name we use. So that's good. So we've got that set up. So now um, this is where we would actually have our export code. So um, I've accidentally deleted the view, but let's say I pretend we were doing this one. So we just go export, grab the code again. And so with the code, we go back into our module and we're going to go ahead and paste this. And so paste a little bit ugly. We should obviously format this, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of the video tutorial. But then we need to make sure, and you'll notice here we've got the code for hook views, default views. It provides an example of how to actually implement this. Way down at the bottom, the export ends here, and then you've got to add this extra little bit of code. Um, and that's because this hook looks for an array to be returned, and so uh, the export doesn't do that by default. So I'm just going to paste that in here. Um, so you'll see here I've got this uh, array of views. I'm only adding the one, so we don't have to repeat for the other. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. And then we're going to return the array, so return the views. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And so with that saved, we also have to update our uh, .info file. The .info file is for our module. And we've got to tell um, uh, Drupal that we have this new file. And so includes slash use, oops, I'm sorry, twd use dot use default dot ink. All right, so we can go ahead and save that. Um, and so just before we go ahead and I'll show you how to actually, you know, we just got to disable and re-enable. I should, I should really, I can't stress this enough. You have to have this function TWD views views API. If you're creating a module and you're not necessarily integrated with views, but you want to provide a default view, you have to call this hook in your module uh, because this path, uh, you know, even if it's not uh, a specific path or it's not included, without this hook, views will not look for the other uh, hook. So it will not load this specific file and it will not call your new hook uh, and you will not get your view listed in the views. So make sure that you implement hook views API, otherwise you will have problems. That said, let's head back to our site. We're going to go to our modules and there's no easy way to do this, but we have to disable and then re-enable. So we're going to scroll down, custom module here, disabling it. Great, so now we're going to scroll back down, enable it. Back to structure views. And if we look, we've got dog image now. And it's actually provided in code. And we get all of these different um, you know pages and blocks associated with it. So that's pretty cool. So that's the end of the video tutorial. Um, so again, just brief recap, we did the clone, we did the export, we did the import, and then we provided um, uh, some code for our module so that we provided default views. And we did that with a simple hook call uh, with the available information over at api.drupal.org. So I hope this helped. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. In the last video tutorial, we'll recap the entire series. I'll show you some cool add-on modules for views uh, that are common, um, commonly used uh, and things that I would recommend. And before I go, you probably heard Susie enter the room. And so she's been in so many photos, we should probably introduce her. And so this is Susie. And so Susie and I both hope you liked the video tutorial. And if you did, please leave a comment, let us know, or throw me a thumbs up. Always appreciate that. Um, we'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks.